Sri Anand Sharma. Thank you, Deputy Chairman, sir. So I rise to make my party's views on the present budget. We have looked carefully at the last year's budget and this year's budget, and with full responsibility and without just criticizing for the sake of criticizing, I'll say that it lacks direction and vision. It's full of platitudes. The present government, characteristically, it is its character, habit, to make very loud announcements, high-sounding words, and then suddenly there is silence about what was stated last year. And I'll come to that, the announcements which you made in your last budget, and where we are, where they are languishing, because many of the projects are non-starters which are considered to be the revolutionary vision of our Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi. So the finance minister has claimed in the budget that the economy is turning around and also that they inherited the economy in a weak state, in a comatose state. Both the Prime Minister and the finance minister say that. Can the finance minister deny that the turnaround started in late 2013. Of course, you will not be admitting, but the fact that the numbers cannot be wished away, the Q1 numbers of GDP growth, 5.7%. Now, let me remind, sir, the Finance Minister and this August House, that of this 90 days of Q1, UPA was in office for 56 days. They've happily appropriated all that also without saying that yes the turning turnaround had started now with regard to the economy you inherited a very strong economy the economy which was recovering which was on a rebound the forex reserves were over 300 billion US dollars exports were 317 billion US dollars the current account deficit was down to 1.8 Therefore, what you have said is not gracious. It's rather unfair to the previous government. Politics apart, the numbers tell their own story, which neither you nor I can rewrite. Now you have claimed that the economy is surging, but your numbers and the budget itself contradicts. What are the ground realities, sir? Investments are falling. Gross capital formation is near zero. The credit offtake by the industry is very weak. Exports are falling for the th third consecutive month. Please don't interrupt. This is not on. And please, you, this is, sir, it will not be deducted from my time. Don't do that. This is his vice chairman. Rep repeating, honorable minister will reply. You don't worry. Sir, if no, this no, no. interruption is unacceptable. No, no. Sir, the manufacturing is low. If exports are low, investments are low, it's very clear that the industrial manufacturing is low, and the IIP numbers indicate that the core sector is in a very poor state of health. We don't wish that to remain there. But, Honorable Finance Minister, these are the realities and you are aware of that. And what it means, jobs are not being created. It is not a surging economy. It is still a recovering and a struggling economy. That's the first point I want to make. Sir, BJP or Inki Sarkar पिछले चुनाव में एक बहुत बड़ी लहर पर उम्मीदों की लहर पर वायदों की लहर पर सत्ता में आई थी इन्होंने लोगों की उम्मीदें जगाई सपने दिखाए वायदे किए भारत के किसानों को नौजवानों को महिलाओं को अनुसूचित जाति जनजाति पहले 
ان کو گمراہ کیا امیدیں جگائی غلط وعدے کیے جس کے بارے میں اب گمبھیر نہیں تھے اور آج ان کے ساتھ دھوکہ ہوا ہے آپ کے اس بجٹ میں دھوکہ ہوا ہے آپ کی نیتیوں میں دھوکہ ہوا ہے اور اس لیے اس کو بے نقاب کرنا اوشک ہے I feel it's my duty to expose this hypocrisy. In para 20 of the budget, finance minister has referred to the government accepting the 14th finance commission recommendations. This was there in the president's address. Prime minister said it is for the first time that so much of resources have been given to the states. Government has accepted the recommendations of the finance commission. What was being done earlier? There were 13 finance commissions earlier. It is a constitutional mandate of the finance commission. When the constitution was adopted in 1950, it was clear that under Article 240, which you know more, finance commission had to be established. And the 14th finance commission was constituted when UPA was in office. The terms of reference it is very important, but determined by the previous government. And what is a constitutional mandate? It's not your option what you do with that. But to say, and to make this claim that for the first time, so much of devolution of taxes, of funds, is being done to the states, this is a mirage. This is a mirage. سچائی نہیں ہے پہلے تو آپ کا یہ بجٹ چھوٹا ہے پچھلے سال کے بجٹ سے پچھلے سال کا جو بجٹ تھا لگ بھگ سترہ لاکھ پچانوے ہزار کروڑ کا تھا اس بار کا بجٹ سترہ لاکھ ستتر ہزار کروڑ کا ہے سترہ اٹھارہ ہزار کروڑ کم پیسہ ہے what you have done it's very clever and I want to inform this house there are funds which are committed the tied funds and their funds which are untied that's the state share of taxes you have reduced the committed funds the tied funds and increased the state share so 18 percent you have reduced the committed funds 14 percent state share of taxes the devolution but actually the center share finance minister keeps on saying Prime Minister has said, we don't have money. The center does not have money. Still, we are doing so much. Can you deny that the center's share remains unchanged at 38%? There is no change. And I'll elaborate further on that. You claim center has less money. I would say so. earlier how the Finance Commission's recommendations were, the devolution was based on transfer of funds. Devolution was on state share of taxes plus grants in aid. Now with this Finance Commission recommendations, you have removed this combination and that is reflected. You have reduced the plan outlay of states by 1,9723 crores in this budget of yours. The central assistance to states has been cut by 1,33,000 crores. You say it's a drastic change for the first time? Yes, but only in the manner of transfer of resource allocation to the states. Central assistance to states, and I'll mention, sir, here, it used to be 42% in the previous budget. In this budget, it has been brought down to 24%. Devolution of state share of taxes was 49%. Yes, now it is the untied. That's what I said, committed and non-committed, 63%. And where is the remainder of 4% gone? The non-planned grants and loans from 9% you have increased to 13 So the actual numbers remain the same. Center still has the same funds. Forget about the CES, CES after CES, which goes directly to the Consolidated Fund of India. When you add up these numbers, I'm surprised on what basis this claim is being made and people are being misled that this government is over generous 
it has done something which was never done right from the days of Jawaharlal Nehru to Dr. Manmohan Singh, and the states are major beneficiaries. I'll tell you, the states will be losers. They will be losers when the tax collection will not be what your over-optimism is, and that will directly cut into the state shares. Sir, what this government talks about is manufacturing. Make in India, along with the others, Swachh Bharat, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, among other things, are this government's major programs, or they claim so. So what are the four pillars of Make in India? Invest India, that was a company, with, uh, Section 25 company, set up between the government of India and the industry with FIKI as the partner country company. In, on 1st of January 2010, through a cabinet decision, was your other pillar, you want to raise the share of manufacturing? Laudable. We all wanted to do that, and you must achieve that. From 17% to 25, 26 percent, create 100 million jobs. Shri Arun Jaitley ji is knowledgeable. You would have read the national manufacturing policy. That's exactly what it said. But that is not on paper. That is something which is under implementation. The principal instrumentality being the national investment manufacturing zones. 16 of which were notified. Your budget mentions about two, Shendre Bidkin in Maharashtra. You have reported the progress and allocated a little bit of more funds. And the Dholera investment region in Gujarat. I'm happy that you mentioned that. Then you will also be gracious to acknowledge that four of these industrial manufacturing cities were launched during our period provided for in the budget of 2012, 2013, and 2014. So you are continuing. So the biggest manufacturing zone of 920 kilometers, square kilometer, which will come up in the country in Gujarat, was actually conceptualized and launched <coughs> during the UPA government. You cannot deny, and I hope that you will advise the Prime Minister to show some grace and acknowledge. The third pillar are the industrial corridors. Right from the Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor, where Japan is the partner, Chennai-Bengaluru industrial corridor, which we have extended now up to Chitradurga. The third, where UK is the partner, the spine, that's the Bengaluru-Mumbai economic corridor, was agreed upon. And I, I will be more than happy that you take this forward at a faster pace. Our good wishes for that. And the last one was the Amritsar Kolkata Industrial Corridor, which was approved in January, 20th of January 2014, to be precise, by the previous government. And you will now take it forward. What I was saying, sir, and why I'm saying all this, there is a reason. Because the last pillar is the EBS project. Neither the Prime Minister, nor the Finance Minister, and the government. We are very happy that you keep on saying that the ease of doing business and you are going to improve. Sir, I must inform this House, it was conceptualized by the National Institute of Smart Governance in 2009. The pilot project was launched for 50 services in 10 states. It took three years to complete that. The eBiz portal, now that's very important, because para, 20 of your budget speech says, or 42, you have said that you launched it in February this year. Sir, the eBiz portal was launched at the National Partnership Summit at Agra on 28th of January 2013. And the eBiz platform for common delivery of services and the common payment gate for multiple debiting and crediting was launched again in Delhi on 20th of January 2014. So what you have done, it's not that you have not done anything. Eleven of the new services 
from customs to excise to Ministry of Corporate Affairs, you have brought them on the eBiz portal. So it's not that launch, because launch was done in 2013, but it's good that customs excise were not coming on board. Congratulations, you have brought those services on board. So therefore, of this Make in India, I have no problems with that. We fully endorse. We used to have Made in India shows all over the world. What was manufactured in India, we used to showcase. You do that. But at the same time, acknowledge that there is a continuity and there is this much of work that was done. On 25th of September 2014, when with much hype this was launched and so hundreds of crores have been spent on publicity, I would like to tell this August House that the only thing which you can, if intellectual honesty has to be there, claim credit to as the original, your own, that is the moving objects line, the logo. That's all. Now, wo sheer chale, wo kal purzo wala aage badhe shub kam nae. Par ye keh do ke ye sheer ka logo hamara hai. Par baaki ye jo char pillars hain ye ho chuke. Kahi iska zikar na apke zire azam karte hain na ap karte hain. Hamko kai baar harani hoti hai ki aap jo hai ye adat pad gayi ki pehli baar ho raha hai. Isse pehle kuch hua nahi. इससे पहले इस देश में कोई उपलब्धि नहीं थी पहली सरकार का कोई दर्शन सोच नहीं था यह स्वस्थ मानसिकता नहीं है अच्छी बात है आप अच्छा काम करेंगे हम उसको कबूल करेंगे अगर पहले कुछ हुआ है आप भी उसको करें अच्छा लगेगा आपने 100 स्मार्ट सिटीज का जिक्र किया था कोई रूपरेखा है डू हैव एनी ब्लूप्रिंट एनी लिस्ट ऑफ दोस सिटीज एनी विजन दीज आर व्हाट आई सेड द ग्रैंडियोस अनाउंसमेंट्स विदाउट Lacking any conceptualization, you had allocated 7,069 crores for 100 smart cities. Well, that you explained last year. What has happened to that money? What has happened to those cities? Your present cities are stressed when it comes to infrastructure, water, sanitation, power. Your priorities are wrong. You address first the basic issues. Of the cities that we have to provide the infrastructure there, and then you move forward. We'll wait to see what that vision comes because there are no guidelines. As I said, there is no blueprint of the so-called smart cities. Good luck. Say, Sarkar ne kaha, aur apne apne budget mein kaha ki hum bahut samvedan shil hain kisanon ke prati, mahilaon ke prati. बच्चों के प्रति जनजाति अनुसूचित जातियों के लिए उपसभापति महोदय मैं इस पर कुछ रोशनी डालना चाहता हूं हमारे चिंता है कृषि पर आपने एक प्रतिशत सिर्फ बढ़त हुई है पहले तीन दशमलव छह प्रतिशत चार प्रतिशत कृषि में विकास था बढ़त होती थी एक प्रतिशत पे आ गए और आपने बजट में कितना पैसा रखा एक कृषि प्रधान देश जिसमें सत्तर पैंसठ प्रतिशत कम से कम लोग कृषि पर निर्भर करते हैं आपने बजट का एक प्रतिशत रखा है केवल एक परसेंट यह सच्चाई आपका स्वच्छ भारत है हमें कोई आपत्ति नहीं यह बहस हो चुकी कि निर्मल भारत से स्वच्छ भारत हुआ आप इसको आगे बढ़ाए इसके प्रचार पर पब्लिसिटी पर सैकड़ों करोड़ और आप स्वीकार करेंगे खर्चा हो रहा है पर वास्तविकता क्या स्वच्छ भारत में आपकी बजटरी एलोकेशन कितनी है पहले पंद्रह करोड़ थी आपके बजट में पिछले बजट में और अब कितनी है 6,246 करोड़ पहले से भी आधा कर दिया स्वच्छ भारत का बजट और पब्लिसिटी के बजट में कुछ 100 करोड़ बढ़ा दिए ये क्या हो रहा है ये लोगों को गुमराह नहीं किया जा रहा तो और क्या हो रहा पूरी दुनिया को कहा जा रहा है कि हम यह कर रहे हैं हकीकत क्या है आपने बोझ भारत की जनता पर डाला है जनता त्राही त्राही कर रही है अभी आपने दो परसेंट सेस लगा दिया स्वच्छ भारत का आपकी कथनी और करनी में फर्क है आपने एक तरफ महिलाओं बच्चों की बात करी देश के भविष्य बनाने की बात 
बच्चे जो भविष्य हैं देश के उनको देखा किया आपने एक तरह बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ आपने महिलाओं और बच्चों के बजट में मंत्रालय के बजट में विमेन एंड चाइल्ड डेवलपमेंट यू हैव रिड्यूस द बजट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एंड नाइन्टी थ्री करोड़ टू टेन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड नाइन्टी थ्री करोड़ लेस देन हाफ दिस इज फॉर विमेन एंड चाइल्ड दिस इज योर संवेदनशीलता एंड प्रतिबद्धता फॉर द आईसीडीएस इंटेग्रेटेड चाइल्ड एंड development scheme budget has been slashed exactly half 16000 crores to 8000 crores can you deny it sir in para 44 of the budget speech finance minister has said we are sensitive to the poor underprivileged disadvantaged my government is committed to their welfare just keep you will be replying i can sit down yeah just keep one fact in mind the finance commission said some of these schemes are to go entirely to the states so we've said we'll fund him 50% good therefore okay. keep that reality in I mind we'll keep that in mind but i have also given the numbers to the finance minister that this claim this claim that you have reduced your fiscal space and transferred more i have given to this house the details as to not how not even 0.001% more will go it's only the untied funds and the taxes and i'll come to your taxes sir now i will come to the sensitivity and pratibaddhata now you cannot say that it is the states where they come in to what i am going to say now so the allocation for scheduled castes has been brought down from 50548 crore to 30850 crores the tribal sub plan from 32386 crores that has been brought down to 19000 crores you have allocated for ed education 19000 crores less 13000 crores have been cut from the prathamik shiksha elementary education you have cut money from mid day meal schemes for the poor children from 13000 crore to 9000 crores your allocation for education have been slashed by 17.2% sir we had given a constitutional right to our people to our children by giving them the right to education which makes it mandatory that 6% allocation should have been there for education but your total allocations are 3.3% if you look at the entire social sector as i have said krishi gramin vikas shiksha swasthya mahila shishu janjati anusuchit jati swachhta ka to maine bata diya aapko 439000 crore kam hai aap garib shoshit se aapki pratibaddhata ek krur mazak hai आपके तथ्य आपकी सच्चाई आपकी सोच आपकी नीति उसको झुटलाती है आपके पास साधन हैं, तेल की कीमतें टूट गई हैं, डीजल की पेट्रोल की खुशकिस्मती है आपकी और देश की भी कि काफी पैसा बच रहा है पेट्रोल डीजल पर आपने सेस लगाकर और पचास साठ हजार करोड़ रुपया बना लिया है तो गरीबों के लिए बच्चों के लिए महिलाओं के लिए ये उनके हक पर क्यों आप कुठाराघात करते हैं उनको क्यों चोट पहुंचाते हैं आपकी नीच नीति और आपकी सोच देश के गरीब देश के किसान और शोषित समाज के लिए नहीं है आपका जो नारा है सबका विकास सबका साथ मैं कहूंगा गरीब से मजाक और देश से मजाक है सर आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू से समथिंग ऑन द ब्लैक मनी वेरी ब्रीफली i've spoken earlier about it and i won't repeat that but you had made the commitments your prime minister made the commitment your party made the commitment and we wish you good luck in all your efforts to get that but now your party president i won't name him 
انہوں نے کہا کہ پندرہ لاکھ کا وعدہ تو شگوفہ تھا جملہ تھا آپ نے کہہ دیا فائننس منسٹر صاحب نے it was only illustrative so everything was illustrative everything was شگوفہ everything was a جملہ so please tell us what the real commitments are where the sincerity is and the seriousness is but one word of caution I have for the government we are reading in the newspapers just to divert attention from the failure and the non-fulfillment of the Prime Minister's promise to the people of transferring that grand amount we all liked it now you're talking of a new law your cabinet as we read has cleared it now Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi is on record saying that the UPA government and Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh are not taking action under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. So he thought that that was adequate to take action. The matter is before the Supreme Court and Finance Minister for whom I have great respect, his leader of this house, and he's a learned lawyer, you know that there are laws of the land. You can't hold assets abroad, can you, under the present law? What is the Income Tax Act? What's FEMA? What's Prevention of Money Laundering Act? You can take action under the present law, which are more than adequate, but you are doing it for other reasons. Do you know the potential of abuse? Have you forgotten what has happened in the past in this country? If you really want, want transparency and accountability, if you want enforcement of law, if you want action, my humble submission is the laws which the country has as a rule-based, rule-governed country are more than adequate. But you take action, you will have a support. If you don't take, if you fail to deliver, we'll ask you questions. Sir, I'll not say that everything what you have done is bad. Some good intentions are there. You have marginally increased the credit to the farmers. You also allocated funds for the Rural Credit Infrastructure Fund. And I compliment you for doing that. But when you talk of rural credit, if you will please clarify when you give your reply, have you done away with or retained the 3% interest subvention for the farmers? If you have retained that, that's not reflected in your budget speech, that can come in the reply. We'll be happy to hear that. Sir, last thing which I want to mention is about the tax collection or the revenues. Sir, I'll say that there is over optimism. There is over optimism there. Based on the assumption that there will be 15 to 16 percent growth or increase in your tax collection. Now, going by your own, own numbers, so how it is measured? The GDP growth, they say, will be 8 percent. Inflation at 6 percent. 8 plus 6 is 14 percent. Tax collection, historically, if GDP grows at 1 percent, has always been less than 1 percent. It has never been 1 percent, never been 1 percent plus. It will be 0.85. And I'm telling you, just going by these numbers, not 16 percent, this tax buoyancy which you say, it will be not more than 11 and a half percent, and you and I will talk when you present the next year's budget and we'll look at your numbers. So how will you increase it to 16 percent? From where will the money come? That's my question to you. The excise is languishing at zero. Are you expecting a sharp spurt? I have told you about the investments, what the present position is on credit offtake, what the present position on falling exports. So where is the excise going to come from unless and until there is a huge, huge jump in investment, capital formation and exports. Otherwise, your so-called unprecedented devolution of states will be dented by the substantial number, your tax revenues may be less 
by at least 70,000 crores. This is our fear. You have kept no fiscal space. There is no roadmap for future. And we'll see within this year that you will have to go back on many of the things which you have said in this budget. Let's be a ticket. तो सर उपसभापति महोदय मैंने कुछ प्रश्न किए हैं कुछ बातें कही हैं मेरा इस माननीय सदन में सर, सरकार को और वित्त मंत्री को यही बात कहनी है कि आपके इस बजट से इन आंकड़ों से मिथ्या प्रचार झूठे वायदे और आपकी संवेदनशीलता ना होना देश के कमजोर गरीब लोगों के लिए वो साफ झलकता है आपकी सरकार आपके वायदे खोखले थे दावे खोखले हैं आपकी सरकार आम जनता के लिए नहीं है छोड़ दीजिए अब बार बार कहना सबका विकास सबका साथ अरे अगर गरीब किसान महिला बच्चों नौजवान किसी का विकास की बात आप नहीं करते तो इसको कहना भी जरा बंद करिए वरना लोग आपको माफ नहीं करेंगे आपके बजट दिशा विहीन है उसमें संवेदनशीलता नहीं है उसमें आगे का नक्शा नहीं है और इसके साथ मैं अंत में एक बात कहूंगा आपका ये बजट जन विरोधी बजट है आपकी सरकार की सोच और नीतियां आपकी सारी घोषणाएं अमीरों के लिए है पूंजीपतियों के लिए है आप हिंदुस्तान के गरीब का हिंदुस्तान के बेरोजगार का किसान का और कमजोर वर्ग की बात आप बिल्कुल नहीं सोचते इसलिए मैं इसकी निंदा करता हूं धन्यवाद थैंक यू मिस शर्मा